This week on Inside Boulder News. Discussion continues on the city's proposed ban on assault weapons. Boulder needs your help brainstorming for broadband. And pump up the party this summer with the city's neighborhood trailer. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, your source for all things Boulder. I'm Jocelyn Avendaño. It's been a little over a month since Boulder City Council started the conversation on assault weapons. Late February, elected city officials instructed city staff to explore options on a proposed ban on assault rifles, high-capacity magazines, and bump stocks. A draft of this proposed ban was presented at the April 5th Council meeting by Boulder's city attorney. Hundreds gathered Thursday night for the April 5th public hearing on assault weapons. More than 150 people signed up to speak for and against the proposed ban during the more than five-hour-long meeting. The proposed ordinance would ban both the possession and sale of assault weapons in the city. Council's goal is to minimize the risk of mass shootings and protect students in the city of Boulder. We sat down with Boulder City Attorney Tom Carr to learn more about this proposed ordinance. One of the questions we've gotten from a lot of people is, is this illegal? Can the city do this? Uh, because there's a state law that says that, that, that by its language prohibits local governments from banning guns. However, Boulder is a home rule city. And under Colorado's constitution, on matters of local concern, a home rule city is equal to the state. This means that the city can pass an ordinance like banning assault weapons because it's a matter of local concern. There is some confusion out there because the language of state law seems to prohibit the city from doing this. But in fact, as a home rule city, we would assert the city has a right. Because of course, the concern is for the safety of our children and that is a matter of intense local concern. The proposed ban comes in the wake of the recent school shooting in a Florida high school that left 17 students and staff dead. Council decided that it was time to consider a ban on assault weapons. Between 1994 to 2004, the United States federal government had banned assault weapons in the entire country. That ban was lifted after the 10-year period. It's important to note that the courts have said that assault weapons are not protected by the Second Amendment as opposed to handguns. Uh, the Supreme Court said that uh, you can't ban handguns because there's a constitutional right to self-defense, but they have excluded military-style weapons from that ban. The proposed ban would have certain exclusions. Those exempt from the ordinance would be police officers, military members, as well as competitive shooters and anybody who has a federal arms license. This is more concerned with the deterrent effect of having easy availability of uh, assault weapons to people who perhaps are mentally ill or predisposed to commit some sort of horrible crime. And most of the mass killings that I've looked at, the guns were purchased legally. And that's troubling. And I think that's what council wants to address. Council decided that they will deliberate the measure at a future undetermined meeting and discuss next steps as to where to go next with the proposed ordinance. The proposed ban is not currently in effect. This in any way reduces, by even the smallest measure, the likelihood that there's a mass shooting in Boulder, it will be a very important ordinance. And that's really the goal. The city is set to host a community meeting on April 11th to engage the community about potential next steps to provide fiber high-speed internet to the city of Boulder. Staff will share new research and details about the project and attendees will have the option of participating in a variety of interactive activities. Since staff's last meeting with City Council in January, Boulder has continued exploring various options for the city to implement a citywide broadband. One of the things we heard from the City Council was to specifically explore uh, an option where the city would build out the network as well as operate the network, similar to what Longmont is doing with their next light service. With help from outside consultants, the city has been conducting a technical analysis and will check in with City Council again in early May to provide a draft of their work. But before they do that, they're holding a meeting to gather feedback from community members. We're calling it broadband brainstorming. So come join us to brainstorm a little bit about broadband. It's going to be an interactive and informative in-person event where we're going to really ask attendees to help us with three items. The three key discussion points of the meeting will be identifying features of broadband service that would most likely persuade residents to switch over to a city service. The second item will be asking participants which options are preferable to the public. And finally, they will take the community's perspective on timing of exploring broadband in relation to the city's municipalization effort. Um, based on feedback that we received from the community and from the City Council in May, 
Um, we've tentatively scheduled a public hearing for June 12th, which is where the city council would decide whether to proceed forward for a ballot item to help fund this broadband initiative on this November's ballot or whether we need to do a little bit more explore, exploration and maybe wait until a future ballot. The city's broadband brainstorming community event will be held on Wednesday, April 11th at Galvanize from 6 to 8.15 p.m. This is really about thinking how do we start to future-proof our community for the internet and internet demands of the future and so help us shape what that should look like. For more information on the city's community broadband efforts, please visit the website seen on screen. Boulder's popular block party trailer is just months away from bringing back some weekend fun to neighborhoods across the city. This community favorite is back starting this June, but you can start making your reservations starting Monday, April 9th. What's 8 feet wide, 7 feet tall, and fun all over? The city's neighborhood block party trailer. It's a box trailer that has inside folding chairs, folding tables, water jugs, coolers, games, activities, and the... Um, the barricades that you need to close your street down if you have a block party permit. The trailer is fully equipped. All you need to add are food, drinks, and friends, and you're all set. Boulder residents can reserve the block party trailer at no cost, and a Boulder Parks and Recreation staff member will drop off and pick up the trailer. Reservations open Monday, April 9th. Um, the block party trailer is available from the first weekend of June through the last weekend of September every Saturday and Sunday and those dates fill up fast. So people will really want to make sure that they're making their plans and jumping onto our website um, in order to get their reservations in as soon as possible. A waitlist will also be available for any possible changes in reservations. For more information on the city's neighborhood block party trailer, please visit the website seen on screen. Reservations begin Monday, April 9th. And in more community news, Boulder gears up for some spring cleaning. This year, the city's volunteer cooperative team a team made up of city staff who work with other city volunteers on increasing community engagement will be leading Boulder's 16th annual Community Cleanup Day. City and partner hosted projects included trail maintenance, tree plantings, and creek cleanups. And new this year, the city invites you to gather your neighbors and bring a cleanup day project right to your neighborhood. The city's neighborhood services program will provide you with the necessary items like gloves and trash bags to support the project. A possible reimbursement of up to $300 for expenses is available. This year's Community Cleanup Day will be held on Saturday, May 19th. Registration deadline is May 10th. Please visit bouldercolorado.gov forward slash volunteer for more information. The 70th Annual Conference on World Affairs kicks off on April 9th and continues through the 13th at the University of Colorado Boulder. The conference will hold 200 events covering the arts, science, human rights, and everything in between. Over 100 speakers and performers are slated over the course of the conference. All events are free and open to the public. You can find the full schedule by visiting colorado.edu forward slash CWA. And speaking of the Conference on World Affairs, the City of Boulder will offer free hop bus service during the five days of the conference. The City's flagship hop bus service will be free to everyone from April 9th through the 13th during CU Boulder's Conference on World Affairs. The free hop service is made possible by a grant through the University of Colorado Boulder Environmental Center, covering about 70% of the cost for the week. The hop runs between Boulder Junction, the 29th Street Mall, CU Boulder, and downtown. People driving into the city can take advantage of free parking on the second level of the Macy's parking garage at 29th Street. To view bus schedules and maps, please go to rtddenver.com. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's edition of Inside Boulder News. If you have pictures, news tips, or events you'd like to see featured, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe. Have a good week.